Finally got my seal covers in for my Toyota Tundra. Today we're gonna install them. I got seal covers for the front, back, and then I got a, went ahead and got the door handle protectors. So let's dive right in and we'll show you guys how to do the install. First thing we've gotta do is remove this piece of plastic here. You can do it without tools. Um, I left my trim tools at the shop, so we're gonna do them by hand. Just grab one side here and start prying up. Once I get it off, I'll show you the underside and you can pause the video. That way, if you're in a cold climate and you're worried about breaking these clips, you can see where they're all located. So they kind of push in and out right there. And that's what it looks like. There are little gaskets underneath here that keep it from rattling and help it uh, stay sucked down to this piece here. So make sure you don't damage that. Don't use a screwdriver or anything. Next up, go ahead and take a cloth. Microfiber is great because it gets the dust as well. You can use alcohol if you want to. I had my truck uh, cleaned today. And there's not any dirt or chemicals or anything like that down there anyway. If you only have the front kit, you're going to get a piece like this. It's going to have uh, two sections. One should be labeled driver and one should be labeled passenger side. All right, let's get these two pieces out of here. It's going to be a bigger piece and a smaller piece. One has uh, little cutout pieces, as you can see here, and they perfectly line up with this hole here and this hole right here. So the best thing to do is go ahead and fit it up into position before you peel off the adhesive, just to make sure you're doing everything right. We're going to index off of these holes here. Pretty much you're going to take either one of these U-shaped pieces and match it up perfectly on both sides. All right, be real careful not to touch the underside. It's a good idea to wash your hands before this with a good degreasing soap like Dawn dish detergent. That way, for the small pieces that you do have to touch, you're not gonna ruin the adhesive. So just guide this thing over the top here. When you have both lined up, just barely put one edge down that way you can make sure it's perfectly straight. Now it's best, once you have this initial piece down, to work from the insides out. So, kind of work like that on both sides. You want to make sure you do it kind of in stages. We'll slowly bend this piece over here. Just use your thumb. You can also get a rag and put it over, over it like this and push on it that way. If you do, just be careful when you get to the edges that the rag doesn't get on the adhesive. But if you have sensitive hands, you may want to do that because this stuff is a little bit aggressive. But yep, just back and forth, really slowly in really small increments. There's a crease right here. This is a part you're going to want to be careful with. You can use your thumbnail to get the adhesive all the way down to the crease. You can also use a trim tool and wrap the trim tool um, in a rag. That's going to keep you from scratching this, but also making sure you get all the way down in that crease there. If you get ahead of yourself, um, you could end up missing that crease and then you'll have an air pocket in there. The air pocket will let in dust and water and eventually um, this thing, whole thing will come off. Alright, so once we've got it down, you really just want to go over this thing. Get all the edges and all the corners on. And that top piece is done. After that, we'll move on to the bottom. Now for this bottom piece, we're gonna do it in stages. Um, I'm just gonna peel back this adhesive about one inch or so, and I'm actually gonna fold it over. So let me reposition the camera and show you that. All right, so I'm gonna take this adhesive backing I'm just pulling it down about an inch or so without touching the adhesive because there are um, a few more angles on this piece and we really don't want it adhering in the wrong spot or at the wrong time. Okay, so it should look like that. So you've got that edge folded over there. Okay, next up, 
now that we have this edge exposed, we're going to take this and slide it into this crack here, just barely underneath where our old one was. You don't want it too far in, just barely go over it with your fingernail. And uh, go slow here, double check your work before you start pushing down real hard. But anyway, go over this real good. If you get it too far up in that crack, um, it's not the end of the world, but you're going to want to make sure you use a plastic trim tool or something that you can stick in that crack to make sure it, it adheres. Because if it doesn't adhere up, up in there where you can't push on it, um, again, you'll get dust and water in there. Okay, so once we get over this lip, just going to go real slow, make a good crease, back and forth. Okay, now we can sl slowly start pulling um, this backing down. We're going to pull the backing down. Now this piece here, you got to be careful because we're getting up to another, uh, another corner, so let me zoom in there. All right, so as we get close to this corner here, we want to be careful. Don't pull your backing all the way out yet until you're pretty close to it. I'm just smoothing back and forth here. And then when we're close enough to it, this is when you want to get a trim tool if you have sensitive hands. I'm going to use my fingernails and I'm going to push down into that, uh, into that crease right there. So just kind of follow it down back and forth. closer we get the more careful you want to be okay now use your trim tool or your fingernails and really push into that corner because we don't want any air bubbles we want this material to lay completely flat down inside there really um, down inside there is the hardest part or I guess I should say the most important part. It isn't really hard. But same thing. We're just going to go back and forth real slow. Just don't get ahead of yourself. Make sure you get this crease really well. Slowly start running this thing down. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So right now you'll notice if you put this piece in here too far out because it'll actually kind of curve up on this lip down here. Um, not the end of the world if it does. You can get a razor blade if it comes down on this lip too much and just kind of trim it off in that crease there. Or you can leave it alone. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. We'll follow it up with a rag. Make sure we get it, these creases really well. That way we never have to worry about this thing again. We can set it and forget it. Now our trim. We'll go back in place. And that's it. So that's all there is to it really on the seal covers. The rear is going to be exactly the same. Um, I will tell you on my rears, they were labeled incorrectly. So definitely make sure you dry fit before you pull the backing off. Okay, we're going to move on to the handle protectors here. I don't think it's necessary to do the rear. It's the exact same process. Just, uh, just take your time with it. So for this part right here, it isn't really too scientific. We're just gonna pretty much eyeball it. I don't know if you can see in the camera, but I've already got a few scratches on this side. So what we're gonna do is set this thing up in here like that and just kind of get it positioned where it looks good. What's gonna be difficult here is you can see as you push this down, it's gonna want to bow up um, on the edges here. So we're gonna start kind of eyeball it. We'll remove just the top edge and then we're going to go back and forth over the whole thing to make sure it lays down flat. The material is uh, pretty malleable. The warmer it is outside, the easier this is going to be. Alright, so we'll do around an inch or a little bit more. And I'm going to fold it back so I can grab that piece. And then we're going to stick it up from the bottom and then just sort of eyeball it to where it looks centered. 
and then start at the top here and run your finger back and forth or your thumb, whatever you're using. And as you get to those little bubble pieces, you'll be able to run them down with your finger. Now, if you didn't leave yourself enough room here at the bottom, you're gonna to wanna to go grab some needle nose pliers. Let me move the camera and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so if you didn't pull enough of this backing off, it's possible you're not gonna be able to reach it with your fingers. You're gonna to have to get up inside here and very carefully grab it with some needle nose pliers and start pulling it down. So I can get it with my fingers now. We'll just do the same thing. I'll run back and forth. All right. So I'm just really slowly pulling on the backing while I'm going back and forth here. If you, if you pull the backing too fast at this point, you'll definitely get some bubbles or wrinkles on the edge that you won't be able to get out. Okay, so once you get towards the bottom, we gotta be really careful. All right, so from down here, this is where you're most likely to get bubbles and wrinkles. You can see I've got uh, one there and then a couple of wrinkles here. So go ahead and take care of that one. And you wanna go very slow and apply a lot of pressure during this portion right here. So I'm gonna put my thumb in from the top. And every time the adhesive comes back, we'll push down here. Sometimes you might have to address the bubbles individually. Okay, so see, I've got these two portions here. I'm gonna go down like that, and there we go. Go around all your edges as hard as you can push down. Make sure you don't have any spot for water to get in, especially at the top. And that pretty much finishes it off. So I agree. These are sort of ugly, but what's even uglier is uh, scratches. So what you may want to do is, I guess, wait till it gets scratched up and then put these things on there. Then you can cover it up. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Thanks for watching.